It's a walkthrough on Auntie K's. Come in, sit down, and join me here for my thoughts on this deck. Hi, and welcome to Andy K's. We are going to look at the Prairie Majestic Oracle today. Um, we're going to go through as a review and get my thoughts and opinions on this deck. Um, it was gifted to me by the creator, and I'm really, really thrilled about it. I had ordered the reading cloth, and, um, and I was gifted this, and I was quite surprised. It's been a really stressful month, especially... Uh, <laughs> the last two weeks and it just feels by today i was just i was worn out i was exhausted i felt done and so this is my um this is my pick me up in the day the thing i save to enjoy for myself and that is to uh go through this prairie majestic oracle with all of you and share my thoughts on it um i wish the color in this in this new tablet was richer it will be richer um, when I can show you things on the new phone and all of that. So let's look at everything. So it comes in a two-piece box. I'm sure many of you have seen. It's got pull tabs. Um, this is what the insides are like. It says explore your sovereign nature. It comes with a guidebook. And the guidebook has a table of contents, um, which has table of contents and they're color coded. The suits, they have suits, they're color coded and they're even color coded on the pages here. Can you see that? Which makes it really easy to flip to the section that you want. Um, and each, um, each being is listed at the beginning of the suit and they're done they're put in alphabetical order of the being which makes it really easy it tells you what that suit is about so this one the blue feel cards teach honoring your emotions without judgment while ushering in more desirable states <coughs> maybe we'll look at each of the beginnings of the suits as we get to them as we go through the cards um and so you have two pages per card. Sometimes the end wraps up with um, with um, suggesting other cards that you could pull forward to um, help uh, bring out this energy, support this energy. Um, and there's usually a part of it that's in bold, a sort of highlighted part to stand out in each page if you're looking to pull something quickly like that pink shiny edges it's an oracle deck they're oracle card sized and they feel beautiful these are the gorgeous backs all right and let's uh let's go through this and take a look so we are going to get started with the bald eagle soar um, and the bald eagle asks, am I ready to be seen? And, you know, I like these sorts of thoughts. Um, am I ready to be seen? If we're going to soar like our, our bald eagle relative here, um, others are going to see us. That's, that's part of it that we have to accept. We have to believe in what we're doing enough um, to be seen. And then next up we have... What am I integrating? The beaver build. All right. And um, so it goes through the different things that the attributes that this animal can bring out spiritually um, and the things we can be reminded to think about and the behaviors that we can look at. And you know, the beaver humans think of the build as a beaver as messing up the environment but they're not they're um they're building in a very conscious awareness of how the they can help the environment benefit um themselves and and others there is a renewal process that comes through with the beaver and um as humans we just don't like it because it's inconvenient and it's changed but you know it's so necessary and so I like that these ideas 
come through in the cards. We have what energizes me play and this is coming at us from the coyote and um, you know the book asks us if um, we have apprehension at the level of freedom that coyote has right um, in new decision making responsibility playfulness and I love that responsibility is thrown in here um, I come at things from a politically indigenous perspective which is a political cultural uh, viewpoint and responsibility um, is so so important and integral to freedom and autonomy in that and I like how the responsibility comes into this card next we have what is next in my becoming dragonfly turn and we can think about how the dragonflies become they are these you know larva um, in the water and then they like turn into dragonflies and take off into the air and towards the sun we have was I turning those over I was we have what am I opening to and the Eastern Tiger Tiger Swallowtail emerge and of course when we think of butterflies we think of how they emerge I love this type of art that combines drawing and photography collage together <clears throat> I did different takes on it um, in the oracles of colonization I've been playing around with different takes on it since I got this tablet and so I really really enjoy this then we have um, what am I ready to leap where am I ready to leap forward grasshopper jump and um, one of the things we're reminded about in the or in the guidebook for this Oracle card is how grasshoppers you know bring about mass change when they do things in swarms and they often you know there's swarms of them and they move and um, so when we ask where am I ready to leap forward maybe we're not leaping forward alone but um, you know in a swarm and what kind of change can we bring when we leap forward in a swarm am I carrying myself with love the kill deer and strut and of course we know how the kill deer struts and uh, it does take uh, an amount of self-love to be able to strut right there's um, there's there's a desire there's a need for self-love and and they strut of course to impress others but they have to have that confidence first what do I want to carve out um, oh I was going to tell you about each section so this is the yellow section and um, so this is act do do um, the yellow do cards inspire active undertaking whether internal or external and offer suggestions um, for how okay so what do I want to what do I want to carve out space for in my life the prairie dog and dig and this talks about how you have a right to decide what it is that you want to make space for in your life and you know um, how's that going to benefit you and give you safe spaces how will it benefit community um, but you know the prairie dogs um, they go and find space often in other people's spaces they make space for themselves no matter what what is mine for the doing prairie mound ant work and this one talks about redefining what you see as work and looking at uh, free wills tied to personal responsibility which as I told you is uh, uh, part of an indigenous perspective and um, I, I'm happy to have cards that talk about responsibility with some frequency since it matches with my worldview that is going to make it really easy to read what is ready for action red-tailed hawk dive all right and 
So we we know how the red tail hawk and if you read Tarot too, this is like a really descriptive sense of the uh, eight of arrows, you know, just coming in on target, die. Um, what is ready for action? Is it is it ready? Do you know it's ready? Have you seen that it's ready? Everything's in place and you're ready to just dive bomb into there. What is ready to go so I can grow, burn, wildflower, wildfire. And of course we know how wildfire um, in a maintained and looked after space brings renewal and rebirth and it pulls all those nutrients, you know, back down into the soil so that uh, everything else can grow. It lets the sunlight in, certain seeds are, um, you know, uh, germinated by fire so it's really really important all right and then we get into the pink cards next and the pink cards are no the pink cards assist with translating intuition into thought form to harness the power of your conscious mind no. So in these cards, we're going to know about knowing and intuition, and it's going to be a bit of a reoccurring message through different viewpoints of it. Uh, 12 minutes, 400. And we start off with the bison. B. How can, how can I know myself as absolute? And the bison definitely is very, very absolute, right? And um, we need them to be because they're, they're an integral part of life. Um, they're an integral part of Perry life. They represent love and home and shelter and bravery and so many different types of virtues that we need. Um, and because they have the confidence of that knowing, that intuition to just be. So how can I know? Uh, myself is absolute knowing intuition. Map. What course takes me home? And of course we have the compass plant. And it uh, leaves tell you what direction you are facing. And its little head will bop right up. And this card talks about values, belief, and comfort and joy. And you know... You can think of those as on the four cardinal points of the compass and help it guide you. And then we have notice. What can I learn from observation? And we have the crow. Um, I quite like the crow. I'll always have some of my own thoughts on the crow, which will work into here. What can I learn from observation? Um, and, uh, you know, the girl has a lot of particular meanings to me myself from a cultural perspective, but I, I like this question. It works really well with that. Okay. Um, would more tenderness help? And this is from the deer mouse and nest. Would more tenderness help? So, you know, your inner dialogue, um, that knowing again it goes to your inner dialogue do you trust yourself where is your inner dialogue da, 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 da. do you need to be more tender with yourself and and listen to different parts of your inner dialogue so that um you know you can learn something from it is your inner dialogue being too critical where do i need to be more tender and um in the sense of um telling that inner dialogue that they're off and they're not going in the right direction they're being too critical do I need to treat myself nicer the way I treat others and have that patience with them that I have with myself what does standing still reveal great blue heron reflect reflect what does standing still reveal what will we notice if we stay still you know and and really pay attention and see what is reflected back to us. You know, see what comes our way that we might see in these reflections. <clears throat> what can I listen for? Great horned owl here. 
Yeah, that's a good one. You know, uh, we always think about owls' eyesight, but um, their hearing is a huge part of their location. So much of them is about how to tune into something, right? Including here. And we can relate that to knowing quite easily. What would help me feel safe in opening up the mallard dabble? And of course, the mallard uh, filters out what isn't going to be safe for itself. So some of what we need to do is trust that we have the correct filters in, in place. What if everything is already working out? Charm. What if we're worrying for no particular reason? Because we already have a good luck charm and things are already going our way. Um, I, are we in tune with ourselves enough to know that, you know, we can silence those inner critics and those inner worries because things, things are already working out? Uh, how does the situation look and feel from a different view? Flip. Can we flip over to another view like the stink pot? Oh, I like that. Again, I like this art of stink pot over those grasses and flowers. All right. What external knowing can I access in human form? 13 lined ground squirrel. I like this one. And it talks about how you know, the 13 line ground squirrel hibernates and how we can think of that as um, um, symbolic kind of death. Yeah, about a symbolic kind of death and um, and going into that rest so we can come out into a time of higher consciousness and a space of it and connect with it. We can remember those ancestral meanings and retrieve those ancestral um, answers if we can go into um, a symbolic like death and rebirth. And then we have trust the white tailed deer. Am I honoring my knowing? Oh, I really like this. I really did. Um, this is, I, I will think of this question Am I honoring my knowing on a really personal and different level? anytime I personally pull this card um, because you know for me am I honoring my knowing when I'm looking at trust in the white-tailed deer I'd be literally asking myself am I honoring my own knowing my own medicine am I trusting it and I having faith in it and um, you know also I can see so much in this for others too but I really like that and then we get into the blues and at the beginning of the blue section, blue is feel. And the blue feel cards teach honoring your emotions without judgment while ushering in more desirable states. And we've got glitter, cottonwood. What gift awaits me? What gift awaits me? You know, certainly my week has been a week of hard and difficultness and actually the last while has but there's absolutely been gifts and it's really easy to just concentrate on all the difficult but it's really really important to see the gifts in those difficult times especially when those gifts in our lives sometimes not even metaphorical gifts but real physical gifts um come in during really hard times like that spirit making sure it comes in when we need it. Are we willing to take a moment and while also, yes, validating our frustrations and our difficulties so we get through them and analyze them and figure them out and work through them? Are we making space to see the gifts also? And then we have Warble. Am I singing my song? And the warble, you know, talks about creating for yourself first. And um, in, in the guidebook, a number of the cards, such as this one, have other, like I said, other cards it recommends might help pull you through. So this one 
it said, um, you know, companions for if you pull war warble and need to look even more closely at am I singing my song? Am I creating for myself first? Uh, it's the eagle soar, the owl hear, you know, thinking about what you're going to receive um, in and what you're not. And if you're creating, let me finish and I'll get back to that. And metal lark patek. So if you're creating, <laughs> you um you 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 do need that trust to just soar. You do want to protect what you're creating so you have a chance to finish it without it being stolen. And also you want to be the owl and think about what are you hearing? What what are you always have influences when you create? Always. Are they influences um that are going to aid what you're creating? Or or are they not? So then change what information is coming in so it supports what it is you're creating. Breathe. Do I accept myself without judgment? Do I accept myself without judgment? Um, and this looks at how this society has such uh, harmful ideas that we pit against our own selves. And so this card gets to it as we talk about the blue feel cards um, and that emotional stability and care. Um, so, you know, are, are we, um, do I accept myself without judgment from that society? I'm turning the page of my notes. Okay. So next we have nurture the role um, what role is mothering energy playing in my life? Eastern cotton, Eastern cottontail nurture. All right. And, you know, we all have those sorts of mothering energies in different areas. Um, in how, what role is it playing in your life? Is it playing a useful, helpful role? Is it out of balance? Um, do you need more of it, less of it? Are, are you putting it out in towards the right spaces? And then we have, where is my strength? Elk, endure. And there's a balance between this and, and the deer, which I really appreciate um, because they are tied medicines. And we see the elk with, um, you know, both night and day represented here and how we often see them at dawn and dusk and you know, uh, they move as, as it switches between those spaces, um, you know, and those are special times as, as we switch between day and night and night and day. There's magic in those times. What is mine to share? Honey bee, sweeten. The honey bee makes much more, uh, honey than their, the colony actually needs. And so what is mine to share? And you know, even in the making of their honey, they share because they share around all the pollinating and, um, and plants get pollinated as they share and go from one to the other, to the other. Liberate. Um, what reminds me I'm free and it's the prairie smoke and there's such a beautiful, delicate flower. How in can I come on this? Can you see the drawings help highlight it? And then there's the natural ones in behind. Really, really pretty. Uh, what reminds me I'm free, liberate. And um, so it talks about how, you know, the flowers hang over when they're budded. And as they bloom, they just liberate and lift upwards. And then the wind comes along and liberates all their seeds across the prairie to germinate and propagate more. Am I receiving peace? River. Soothe. I mean, do I need to say much about that? We know that's what water does. And, and the river just carries as it soothes, you know. It doesn't just hold it. It carries also. And then we have, what am I cleaning up or converting turkey vulture digest. And so, uh, the book called this, the take out the trash day and talks about the magic of, you know, transmuting, um, undesirable energies into 
positive energies um, and how the turkey vulture does this in the various aspects of the way they go about uh, scavenging and cleaning up and preventing disease in that way and all kinds of things. All right, delight. What enchants me? And it is sweet leaf or wild bergamot and this is also part of my medicine and um you know what enchants me there couldn't have been a better word i was just like yes whatever you wrote in the book this is going to work for me but it went along wonderfully it talks about does pleasure feel forbidden um or unproductive and it talks about um how wonderfully sweet leaf, wild bergamot or sweet leaf um can help in these things and they can help in so many ways in things related to desire, the delight and desire <clears throat> <coughs> how can i deepen trust that my intuition knows the way wind blow and we have the comb flower here you know just uh their um their petals back their faces pointing forward and the wind just blows the grass is you know they're just bending as the wind blows how can i deepen trust that my intuition knows the way can we trust ourselves that our our intuition is going to know what to do when the wind comes and blows and we'll just go in the right direction and we'll be able to do what's needed of us and so that's why these are in the field cards because yes we have intuition but do we trust in ourselves do we love ourselves enough do we believe ourselves enough to use it and then we get into the greens so we will look at the beginning of the green section um which is claim um the green claim cards inspire taking back your power by activating and wielding self-authority. And it starts off with, am I fully claiming my authority? Badger, defend. And that badger, like they defend. They know that they can and they will um, defend themselves. They can stand their grounds. And um, that that is definitely a claiming of self-belief. And it's also a claiming of um, what you need, what you deserve, what, what depends on your survival. I am going to claim it. I am going to make sure I have it. And in this world, that comes with so much defense. How can I be of service? Big blue stem shelter. And this makes so much sense because that big blue stem is of huge service to the prairie. It's, 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 uh, it holds the soil together, it holds so many other plants together with its ginormous roots um, that are taller than, than it is above the ground. Um, and as such, it provides stable, um, by stabilizing itself with its extensive root system it stabilizes all the other grasses with its essential with its essential root system and is able to provide through this dependable shelter for others by looking after themselves first is it time to reclaim and reinvent the structures in my life black-footed ferret take over I <laughs> like that. You can be grateful for what came before and reject what doesn't work for you. Um, was one of the quotes in the book. And I so like that for takeover. You know, this, this is great for people working on taking over things. Um, was it time to reclaim and re, is it time to reclaim and reinvent the structures in my life? And, you know, uh, this adds to a look at the tower card where we have to, you know, reinvent the structures in our life, which involves reclaiming what we're going to be responsible for. And in that takeover, we can think about what we've learned from the past and learn from that what did work and what didn't work and what needs to be changed and thrown out and brought in. Where do I give and receive 
for mats, we have the butterfly milkweed and we have both the monarch and the butterfly milkweed. I have some milkweed behind me. Um, it, they're a perfect symbiotic pair. They're a perfect symbiotic pair, these two. And um, they benefit each other's lives completely. And so that was quite brilliant <clears throat> for Matt. How am I the light in darkness, the Luna Moth for Radiate? And we talk about Radiate, the knowing uh, within you. This made a lot of sense to me. Moths, you know, they bring messages from the ancestors. So radiating that knowing within you is a really good message from the Lunar Moth. How am I the light in the darkness? And when you believe in it, you you just aren't afraid and you can be a light. How can I safeguard what is sacred to me? Meadowlark protect. The meadowlark safeguards what is sacred to them. Their nest, where their, their chicks and their babes are. They don't do so by just standing guard at that nest nonstop, afraid to go out and collect food or look after its home and its territory. They set up ways that they can protect their whole general territory and in so live within their full home area while also protecting their nest and their children without just being afraid and stuck in one space. We have... In my is my pursuit both honorable and focused mountain lion stock. Really like that. Is my pursuit both honorable and focused? How can I know myself as bigger than any fear? Prairie king snake shed. And so of course we're talking about shedding our fears in this and one of the reminders in the book is that you know the prairie king snake can be mistaken for other snakes you might be like ah snake i'm gonna get poisoned hurt da, da, da. and it's it's not actually going to hurt you but um you know how can i know myself as bigger than any fear the king snake is not afraid and um you know one way you can look at knowing yourself as bigger than any fear is by um, knowing what it is you actually need to be afraid or concerned about uh, because then you can focus on what you can do about it. If you're afraid of everything, you're, you're, it's too hard to figure out and focus. What riches do I carry within prairie soil hold? And of course, the soil it does hold it holds all the roots which is how all the plants in the prairie hold themselves together and look after each other and also in that dirt is where they are nourished and is where things decompose to provide that nourishment and um so we can think to our past and our ancestors in this and also to past lives and i thought that was a really beautiful connection because of course Many of us see our ancestors and our past as, you know, in the, in those soils that are our homelands. <clears throat> and then we have, what is mending purple coneflower heel? And so it talks about how the purple coneflower holds its heart right up to the sun, throws back its petals and soaks up that healing sun. Um, what kind of release would protect clarity in my space? The striped skunk clear. And, uh, would protect clarity in my space. Yeah. To keep, like, a safe shield around you. Um, what kind of release would, you know, protect that clarity? You know, knowing what your safe space is, is one of the places to start um, in being decided that you're not going to run. You're going to maintain your safe space by standing guard and clearing people out if they don't listen, which I have definitely done at times. I can relate to this, to this striped skunk. <coughs> and then there's four celestial cards 
And they are the sun and the moon. And so we can think of the energies that we often think of with the sun and moon in various cultural practices or spiritual practices or divination practices or um, common and tarot based practices. And then we have the sky and the star. I would add a word to the keywords for sky and that would be movement. That would be a cultural perspective on that. And then we have star. And I like the connections here to community and ancestors and knowing and magic and spirit because that also makes sense to me um, and my worldview, but I think it does for so many also. Um, some people think that when you die, you go to a specific place called heaven or might have other names or, you know, from my perspective, you know, I think we go to a place called Star World. Um, it's just more direct description <laughs> um yeah so this works really great uh for me so this this is the deck and i'm really um i'm really excited to be using this um i i quite like oracle decks i did not know this until like a little over a year ago a friend came and visited me with some of their oracle decks and um and it was animal kin and moonology and I went out and got Animal Kin and Moonology. Oh, look at that. I can shuffle this. Oracle decks of this size, I am more likely to be able to shuffle. But also, these cards aren't too thick. They're really nice. Um, kind of nice bend to them. Um, so, yeah, these are the cards. Um, so I really fell in love with Oracle decks and, um, and so I'm really excited about this. The way I use Oracle decks, I realized more Oracle than tarot decks would actually serve my purpose the way I use them both on their own and with tarot. Um, their range, um, gives me a range of places to pull directions into a tarot reading or complementing one. Um, so I do foresee myself and currently have more Oracle decks and tarot decks. Um, and yet also, as I was putting this into my spreadsheet, um, I was like, oh man, like just because I have an idea of how many Oracle decks and how many tarot decks I feel myself getting up to, that doesn't mean I need them all right now. Um, <laughs> And so I think I need to take a look at my wish list, pre-order, Kickstarter list, which I already know is bigger than it should be right now, and um, look at what I already have pre-ordered or Kickstarter that's going to be coming in between now and the fall, and um, maybe pause so that I can get to know these before the decks do in the fall start coming in. Um, and that's kind of hard because there's decks coming out that I'm really interested in and really into. Um, and I was reorganizing my tarot space and all this it looks all much nicer back here, doesn't it folks? So I was doing all this and rearranging all this and knowing I wanted a different system for holding my cards and was like, oh. But I also know how I work and like I have a really good number of new things in that will keep me working with a good rotation of them in with some of the ones I know really well. Um, maybe I need to hit pause and hope that the decks I'm really looking forward to are available later on um, because by the time I've worked with these newer decks for a little bit i'm gonna have a batch coming in in the fall and so yeah yeah so i'm very excited about this where am i going to fit this deck in i don't necessarily pair things up visually so much as i do understanding wise and this might be a sort of deck um i keep in a space where i can grab it when i 
it's got a huge range of places to be coming from. Um, yeah, and it would be great. It's going to be really great for just straight up oracle readings, especially with the suggestions of think about these other cards. It'd be really great for straight up single card oracle readings. Um, and so, yeah, there we go. I'm looking forward to it.